Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on receiver system. For this video, in fact, will be the fundamental discussion on receiver. This video, I'm going to discuss what is actually a receiver sensitivity. In short, receiver sensitivity is actually just a number. So when we actually talk about number, we want the number to be as big as possible or as small as possible. So after this video, you will be able to understand okay, what is actually a receiver sensitivity. You want the number to be as big as possible or as small as possible. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part five series discussion on receiver system. The rest of the discussion on the receiver system, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those video if you're keen to know more about receiver system. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comments, suggestion. How can the quality of this channel can be further improved? Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's come to the definition of receiver sensitivity. Receiver sensitivity is the lowest power level. So this is the keyword. This is actually the lowest power level at which the receiver can detect an RF signal and demote the data. In short, it indicates the weakest signal that the receiver will be able to identify and process. Okay, so which means that this receiver sensitivity is actually a number. This number is actually the lowest power level, okay, which means that anything better than this receiver sensitivity, I actually guarantee that the receiver can detect this signal and demote the data. If the signal is worse than the receiver sensitivity, then I cannot longer guarantee that the receiver can actually detect this signal and also demote the data. So basically, in a simple word, receiver sensitivity indicate how good your radio. This number, okay, if you can achieve, then I guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal. If the receive signal is worse than this number, then I may not be able to guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal and also later on demote this data. So this is a very simple definition of receiver sensitivity. Receiver sensitivity is expressed in dBm since it represents how faint and signal can be successfully received by the signal. Okay, basically, this is what it means. Okay, receiver sensitivity because typically will be a very small number. So we would like to use dBm to quantify this receiver sensitivity. Okay, because typically this receiver sensitivity actually measure the signal. Basically, in short, the lower the power level of the signal, the better the receiver. In short, can you imagine the smaller this number, I actually prefer it because I actually can detect even a weaker signal. Hence, ideally, we want the receiver sensitivity to be as small as possible so that we can detect the weakest signal. Sensitivity is purely a receiver specification and is independent of the transmitter. Okay, which means that sensitivity don't actually depend on transmitter. Okay, so on the next slide, okay, I will explain why we cannot depend on the transmitter. Sensitivity basically is a spec of receiver. They don't really depend on transmitter because if you depend on transmitter, I don't think it's a fair comparison. On the next slide, I will further elaborate on this. So let's come to this little fun picture. Okay, so receiver sensitivity is something like our hearing. Okay, whether how much signal we can hear. Okay, for example, as I have defined the receiver sensitivity early on, okay, this receiver sensitivity, okay, let's say is our hearing. I guarantee that if your sound is 
larger than this receiver sensitivity, I guarantee that you will be able to hear the signal. Okay, if the sound is worse than this receiver sensitivity, then I will not be able to guarantee that you will be able to hear the sound. So basically, in short, receiver sensitivity is just like our ear. We determine basically whether we can or we cannot receive the signal. Okay, so now I want to explain okay, why receiver sensitivity cannot depend on transmitter. So let's do a very simple comparison. Okay, for example, now I'm going to task you to do this. Okay, I have two receiver, receiver A and receiver B. I task you, which is a better receiver? Is receiver A better or a receiver B is better? So next, you are going to do this testing. Okay, so what happened here is basically under this receiver A, Okay, you actually has a transmitter that transmit out a very loud sound. So basically, because the transmitter transmit a very loud sound, technically you can assume that the receiver A will be able to hear the transmitter loud and clear. As for receiver B, for example, okay, I actually has a transmitter that emit out a very soft sound. And because of the soft sound, typically receiver B can hardly hear the sound from the transmitter. So over here, now you need to do a conclusion. Is receiver A better as compared to receiver B? Over here, I guess you will say that this is not a fair comparison because the transmitter varies. It can be a loud sound or it can be a soft sound. So basically from here, I cannot conclude that receiver A is a better receiver as compared to receiver B. So hence, okay, the meaning of receiver sensitivity cannot include the consideration of the transmitter. Like what I mentioned early on, if this is depend on the transmitter, hence, if I expect this, I will emit out as loud sound as possible so that you will be able to hear the sound and therefore you will quantify that this radio is a better radio. And hence, because of this, receiver sensitivity basically decouple from the transmitter. I hope you have a better idea now. Okay, so let's go through some numbers of receiver sensitivity. So let's say I have this range of numbers from minus 78 dBm, minus 79 dBm, minus 80, minus 81, and minus 82 dBm. For example, when I actually say that, okay, the receiver sensitivity is minus 80 dBm. Okay, minus 80 dBm is actually over here. So over here, you can see that these number are actually so-called bigger than minus 80 dBm. So therefore, under this line here, anything that you decode, for example, your signal is minus 78 dBm, I actually guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal. Again, if your signal is minus 79 dBm, I also somehow can guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal. Same as minus 80, so this is basically the minimum number that I actually can guarantee that your receiver can receive the signal. Anything that worse than this number, okay, which is the receiver sensitivity of minus 80 dBm. For example, if the signal is minus 81 dBm, I cannot longer guarantee that you will be able to receive the, the signal, same as minus 82. So in short, any number therefore on top of here, I actually can guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal. Anything therefore underneath this receiver sensitivity, I cannot guarantee that you will be able to receive the signal. So basically, this is the definition of receiver sensitivity. They quantify how good the radio is. So over here, you can see that if this number, I can push it as down as possible, then the better the radio because I'm able to receive a very weak signal. And hence, basically, this is how the receiver sensitivity works. Next, okay, I'm going to go through typical range for receiver sensitivity for various RF module, okay, basically typically from minus 50 to minus 100 dBm. Okay, so basically you can see that we have Bluetooth, we have Wi-Fi, we have cellular, we have LoRa, we have this, this is basically the satellite communication. We have the Zipi, okay, so uh, this like, uh, like our GPS, okay, uh, like our GPS. So over here you can see that uh, our GPS somehow has the best receiver sensitivity okay, because receiver sensitivity for GPS okay, they need to be favorable because imagine the satellite communication is so many kilometers away from us so therefore for this GPS we need to design it 
very robust. We need to ensure that the receiver sensitivity for this GNSS must be as low as possible. And hence, okay, over here you can see that this GNSS has the best receiver sensitivity. And over here you can quantify that Wi-Fi properly has the worst receiver sensitivity. So this gives you some idea about receiver sensitivity. Let's work out an example. Okay, so before we start on the example, this is basically the formula to calculate the receiver sensitivity in dBm. Basically over here will be minus 174 dBm plus 10 log bandwidth plus noise figure in dB plus signal to noise ratio in dB. Let's come up a very simple example. Okay, what will be the receiver sensitivity if a receiver has a noise figure of 8 dB? So they have this noise figure here. This will be 8 dB. Channel bandwidth of 1 megahertz. So I know my bandwidth, which is 1 megahertz. And the minimum SNR at the receiver output is 12. So basically this will be 12. So over here you can see that this is a fixed number, which is minus 174 dBm. Basically, I do a 10 log 1 meg. Basically, I obtain this number, which is 60 dB. Noise figure is given in the question, which is 8. Okay, signal to noise ratio is also given in the question, which is 12. And I work up that the receiver sensitivity is equal to minus 94 dBm. So with this, I hope I have given you some simple understanding on receiver sensitivity. So... By now, I guess this definition of receiver sensitivity will be more clear. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please stop to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I really hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.